Hey, it's great to be here with you today or whenever you get a chance to watch this. It's feeling a little strange here in this uh, obviously COVID pandemic and all that we're doing as coaches and trying to handle this and deal with this. The world is a little off axis. <laughs> the paradigm seems to be shifting every day. Um, anyways, my name is Judd Keim, uh, defensive coordinator of Pacific Lutheran University out here in Tacoma, Washington. Uh, I'm at a little $20 IKEA table here and a small little iPad uh, in the bonus room of my house. This has been uh, Camp Kime here since uh, late February, early March. Went through an entire Division Three non-traditional uh, virtual spring ball Zoom call guru here, kind of like we're doing here now. And and uh, but I've been at PLU for 17 years. Uh, played there, an alumnus uh, from PLU in the mid 80s. You can tell I got a little gray up there. So been around a few years, uh, a product of uh, small college football, you know, the kind of person you become through the experience. Um, uh, yeah, the true student athlete experience, uh, earning a degree and this vision you have for your career and life and where that goes and how we can enhance that, value that. Uh, put that together, being a great teammate, you know, dudes who love the game, they're uncommon, they total release, they enjoy the trip and and serve others, all of those kind of things has been, you know, something that's been part of PLU football for years. Uh, we did go through a transition a couple of years ago. I'm kind of the last of the Mohicans here and hung in there and uh, brand new head coach that we've had. I keep saying brand new and he's just a kid. A guy named Brant McAdams, maybe some of you have heard of him. He came out of Trinity University down in uh, Texas. And uh, Brant came up here a couple of years ago and building on the, the house that has been PLU football and his vision for our future and where we're going, you know, building on the best of what we've been and where we're or like the student experience that, that we offer here and arguably one of the top division three conferences in the country. Uh, I know we got uh, some Ohio roots here and Mount Union and those dudes uh, kind of been running this ship for 20 plus years with Karis and that crew. And I think you guys got a new guy now. Uh, the Texas conference and the Minnesota guys. And anyways, uh, this university here, PLU, uh, guys, we've been in eight national championship games. Uh, we've won four, three of those were NAIA titles. Uh, we were an NAIA program, this whole conference, uh, up till 1997 and went to division three NCAA, uh, PLU won the D3 national championship in 1999, ESPN, that whole deal. If you ever get a chance to watch it on YouTube, it's kind of fun to see some of the up and coming ESPN commentators and, you know, they're all NFL guys, D1 guys now, but they, they did that little D3 game back in 99 against Rowan college and Lutz got after those new, new Jersey guys that day. And, and the legend coach that's been here was here for 33 years, Frosty Westering, college football hall of famer and wrote a couple of books. And, and uh, not a day goes by that I don't think about him and that experience, how it's filtered in my life, my wife, my family, my community, my church. And obviously as, as uh, the filters and my own thoughts and philosophies have all come through my experience through PLU football and, and how that's laid in, in uh, layered in and developed of and wide base, higher the peak, all these kind of things that we've learned through PLU football. But anyways, so just throwing that down, I did, I did spend six years out in the Midwest uh, in the Minnesota conference. I was also in the NCC there with Mankato State, who I know still rocking, go Mavericks, doing really well in Division Two, and Spent uh, four years down with an old teammate of mine, uh, Scott Squires at California Lutheran University. And Scott jumped to the CFL for a while. And, and then I had an opportunity really when Frosty retired after the 2003 season, that opened up a chair here and been here since 2004. I'm a defensive guy by heart. That's my passion. That's my energy. That's my rock and roll. Let's go. Rip, rap, grab cloth, hair on fire, fit it up. 2-9 principle, 11 is 1. Let's go, guys. Single gap, single block, play fast defense. And so did that for seven, eight years, and then moved back to the offensive side, which was awesome. Uh, quite frankly, it gave me a whole new perspective, kind of brought that defensive perspective and concepts to the offensive deal, putting those plays together and all their rhythm and timing and all the things that happen that uh, been always involved with special teams. And then when we made this transition, moved back to the defensive side of the ball and and I took the reins of being a D coordinator here again and 
kind of dusting off the old playbook. Uh, Brant's an old 425 guy, and I'm an old 425 guy, but no question we had a little bit different thought process. Philosophy is very similar. We, we were literally shoulder to shoulder his first spring here, whiteboards in hand, going after it as coaches do. A couple of, you know, a couple of pops on the table there. Let's go, man. And two, three in the morning. All right. I think we got this thing laid out. And, you know, I'm kind of a coverage guy, back end guy. And Brant's more of a root him out front guy. So that's kind of how we laid it out. And and then uh, unloaded this new program, a yeah, new way of doing things, all new schemes, all three phases of the football. And, and it's been a fun ride. So I uh, got the full reins of the defense last spring, not just this couple months ago spring, but last spring. But really didn't get a chance to do the full install, full new concepts, a few semantics there and some different words and terms that, that we use, but all fits uh, what we're doing uh, conceptually. And I'll, I'll say that from from uh, the the set go here, guys. Uh, from first down here, I guess I'll say, uh, we, we teach very much concept-based. And I'll, I'll be honest with you, you know, whatever your experience of or impressions of Division three and all that we're doing, football is football and backbone is fundamentals. And and uh, you, you get sound at those type of things, no question, everything you do, a lot of different ways to skin a cat to get from point A to point B. Uh, I'll be honest with you, in all this COVID time we've had, I've had way too much time for professional development. <laughs> I guess kind of what we're doing here. And holy smokes, gotten a lot of great information and new concepts. But I'm going, oh, my gosh, I love that. I think that's cool. I think this fits in our system and this and that. But I'm also like, oh, got to teach all this stuff, you know. And point being, guys, you guys probably have more time with high school programs and access to your kids than we really do. So, uh, you know, all the terminology and all the concepts and all the scheming and all the terms that, you know, I've been listening to and staying up with. And I'm like, man, I just can't teach it that way. We got to get big picture on this and, and let our guys grasp that. Uh, two plus two equals four. You, you, you'll know what I'm talking about as we get into this. And let's just go rock and roll, you know, and clear minds and fast legs. I get that. Uh, uh, the, the, the core of this defense, I'm a four, two, five guy, by the way, uh, with the university of Washington, when they were rocking and rolling with Don James in the early nineties there and the Steve Edmonds of the world and top defenses and really that attack style, you know, bouncing from an Eagle front, you know, over and under fronts to the true bear front and bringing five or six, every play athletes who can hold their water on the back end. Like, Whoa, man, that's a fun way to play defense and a lot of dynamic plays, TFLs, big sacks, thump that quarterback, all that kind of stuff. So that is more of what I believe in defensively. Uh, not quite that extreme, but I like to think I'm a pressure guy, get after him guy, big time movement guy, pre and post snap. Uh, love those old line guys, but they absolutely dislike movement. I understand that. Uh, we dog almost four out of five snaps, bringing somebody from somewhere we put stunts and movements in front of it, pre and post snap. We're not going to let those O-line guys just unload those squat and power clean muscles because we got a standard old basic three technique. We may be head up. We may be in a um, um, uh, inside, outside a line, head up a line, a two eye, a two, a, a three technique, a four eye, a four, a five technique, whatever it is. And then that shifts uh, post snap because we're stunting, moving, twisting. Uh, and then insert the dog inside it, outside of it, you know, maybe walk one guy up and bring in the other guy, make them slide to the field, but we're coming from the boundary I and mean, all that kind of stuff, the stuff that we do. Uh, we're pretty good at what we call the prowl, uh, disguising our back end. We're a too high look most of the time pre-snap and where our inserts, our spins are going is all post-snap. If you want to play action, that's great because the center field was covered up. Now it's not, or it does look open. It's clear. And now we cloud it up with a high hole player, a middle third player. And then we have some ways to kind of band it or rob him down and, and invert those corners to kind of half field deals, all kinds of stuff, guys. So I'm, I say all that, but we do do a lot of stuff. What I was getting to, uh, I spent a week with Gary Patterson at TCU years ago. And, you know, they're a true 425 and things that they're doing. And, but he tags a lot of stuff. So that's how we get away with what I think is a pretty sophisticated looking as an offensive coordinator, offensive staff is tearing down and breaking down our defense. I know for a fact, geez, you guys do a lot of stuff. 
that's because we tag it up. So we may put a twist in the short side. We got a movement on the wide side. We got a dog or a blitz that's coming on a smoke path or an under path or what we call a wrap path. But we're going to insert this. We're going to expand a backer there. But we tag all that in the call. And then, you know, as I got back into the new era of offense now and no huddle and one word plays and all that kind of stuff, I'm like, man, we got time to get all these tags in to do it this way. We used to rip and Liz the defense and have kind of a run strength group of four and a away strength or passing strength group of four field and boundary corner. I'm like, yeah, we don't have time for that, man. We kind of got to be left and right. So we've gone back to or gone to, uh, short and wide or boundary side and field side. So our kind of guy that eliminates that whole process and the fire drill that sometimes that looks like. So we got short side guys and wide side guys. So the ball moves on the hashes. We're just, we are flipping, but that's like right after post snap guys know where they need to go. And then as we have found, uh, and maybe different in, you know, your region, but Yes, a lot of these teams are no huddle, but they, they're just no huddle. There's a lot of time as they're getting their signals, we're putting our signals in. And yes, we have some one word things, our Geronimo calls and Maverick calls, or whatever it is. And that kind of puts us into certain stuff. We've never been a much of a check to or an AFC team automatic formation call. We occasionally do a BTF, a blitz the formation certain ways, but you got to make sure 11 guys are on the right page. And I've always just never liked if they're in this formation, we're in this coverage. If they motion to this formation, we check to this coverage. Oh, guys know that. So they're going to bring out their three deep and two deep beaters or man beaters or zone beaters or however it is. <coughs> Excuse me. So in essence, our coverages are universal. They, they work. There are certainly strengths and weaknesses versus certain formations, certain threats. Is, you know, you guys got, you know, offensive guys got a way of putting your best kids at the slot, at the X, at the Z. Man, how are they doing that? but we'll find some ways to start coverage that as we call it fine where that best kid is we're going to try to take him out and spin into him get get numbers on him and that kind of deal so i'm giving you a little bit of stuff guys maybe i'm talking fast here uh, but what coach nick asked me to do here and i thought well I'll, I'll give you a little idea of how we have processed analyzed debriefed our football season last fall, we all do this stuff, you know, in different ways to do it. And, and maybe there's not much here that would be any different, or you do a lot more than what we do to break this all down, all the data and all the huddle and all the statistics and down and distance and situational stuff that we all study. But I'm just kind of giving you, this is how we did it. So, uh, or have done it. It's still a work in progress. Uh, we thought we were kind of getting ready for, the new install plan for August 18th for us, but that just shifted our conference. If I didn't say that already is bumped to uh, suspending the fall and we'll be playing football in the spring, which is unique in itself. And still not quite sure what things look like here. We actually have a staff meeting next Monday here and start talking about what the NCA is going to allow us to do this fall. But I'm going to share with you how we broke it down. And again, not so much, the, the down and distance and situational football, which would reflect in the game plan versus that opponent, that, that's already in there. We, we did all that, all the opponent study. and But more big picture, like what, what are we not fitting right? What are we asking this kid to do? Are we utilizing our talent? You know, put them in a place to be successful kind of way of doing things. Uh, we played a lot of really young first-year type guys, good football players but had to pair and dilute down a little bit to give this kid a chance to be successful or give him a hybrid position so he can rock and roll and do what he does best and just not put any calls in to make that kid think too much. Again, clear minds, fast legs, let it rip, find the ball, go thump it, fit it up right, you know, near shoulder, near foot, rip, wrap, grab cloth, capture that cat, accelerate and finish and dominate to the deck, all that kind of tackling stuff. But so I wanted to, with our coaches and our head coach, Brant McAdams, is our linebacker coach. I coach the secondary, so it's actually five a five position group. The two safeties, the, the, the short safety, the boundary side guy, and the wide guy. And then our boundary corner, field corner. <coughs> and then our kind of our hybrid position, our overhang, our 
field side, curl flat player. Some call him the outside backer. The old days, we called him an invert. Just like an inverted safety, he's more of a strong safety kind of guy, which we call the hawk. So with all that in mind, and going back through our thought process, how the game came out, uh, you guys could pull us up. Statistically, we weren't that great. <laughs> <coughs> but again, we played a lot of guys, young guys. We're excited about where we're heading. When you look at the conference statistics, wow, we went from dead last to third in the conference in rush per average. Uh, we weren't awesome in secondary coverage. But if you take two, three plays out, kind of the big chunk plays, big plays, huh, not, not bad. And we went from dead last to sixth. You know, those kind of numbers, offenses, you know, the days of holding people under 280, 290, you know, on these 10, 11 personnel teams and know how to move the chains a little bit. Just got to keep them out of the zone, doggone it. But uh, anyways, that's not the point, guys. We just want to make sure. So this is our template. Uh, I got shared screen here. Here we go. So this is what we worked through. And I've been using this for years. This was our study of the 219 season. Uh, I called it winter of 20. So we probably started this kind of as recruiting was winding down in early, mid-February, started meeting as a staff and uh, had the call sheets of every game, what call we had, the results of, you know, just basically the, the huddle printout of the game itself. No more than three times per play because we're not trying to kill it. We're not trying to get too forensic here. Just go through the basic things that we're looking for. And I'm big on alignment assignment. Who are my threats? Where's my help? Uh, when something's going, something's coming. Every pass route has bait, live, and decoy in it. So you can go over. If one release is serious, we get an inside release by the slot, and he presses the play side, near side. If the safety drops in and he's inside ear up, I'm like, oh, jeez, okay. I mean, I get all that. That's great. But last I checked, there's bait routes, there's decoy routes, and then there's the live route. Let's find the live route. Because if we can take away the first response, the first look at the quarterback, and now he's got to start – scanning the field or the end result he hits his check down his sit down tight end over the ball or the flare of a back or a leak out of a back we've done good because after the first response things usually go bad for the offense and when you layer that in as a heat team it was all these quarterbacks and old coordinators all our conference opponents watch our film wow these guys get after it they're coming downhill so it's going to be quick rhythm. It's going to be quick release type passing, three-step passing, whatever you want, it, whatever you call it. So for a quarterback to sit there and just pat, pat, and scan, 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 man, we just can't allow them to do that. That's what they do, and they just get really good at it seven on seven. It's a little different when 11 dudes are out there with their hair on fire kind of thing. So anyways, obviously these are basic things, guys, alignment, assignment. Uh, are we aligning correctly, putting guys in the right spot based on that formation, based on a pre-snap shift, based on a pre-snap motion, all that type of stuff? And are we adjusting properly? And then we layer in the call itself. So did we execute or align based on that call? Uh, we're not, we, we're big on techniques. You know, the one eye and a two and a three technique and a four eye and a four and a five technique, six technique, seven technique, inside shade of the tight end. But because we stunt and move and got to get to certain aiming points and focal points, just align for success. Guys, you're, you're a B gap player, big fella. We may align you in the A gap, but you're going to be a B gap player and your linebacker stacked on you understands that. So he's got a gap exchange, but that's post snap. Okay. I would say all that, but I'd also say just, just pat the back LB hit it. Everything's downhill. There's no lateral in our vocabulary. Everything is downhill and get it. Because we, we are going to get numbers. We are going to get plus one. You know, we got to shake this loose kind of deal. And that's why I, I go back to, guys, single gap, single blocks, play fast. That's the style of our defense. Of course, we got gap integrity. That's standard basic stuff, okay? And when we go to our Oki fronts, our three down fronts, and we snuck that four eye in there, so we're B-gap accountable. Uh, we may be out inside shade of a slot, but that hawk player or that second hawk player, what we call our short, you're still a C-gap dude, man. And that back set away from you, there's a chance that that outside hit's going to come to you. Okay. But anyway, so that, that I'm giving you, I'm jumping around here, guys, but just give me a lot, little bit idea how we think. 
Okay, so the defense called per that per that play. Uh, did that call help them against that formation, against that you know runner pass or play action or whatever it was? That's all filtering through. Uh, are we defending the play the way that we plan to defend it? Uh, you'll find one of our prime time mandates for this spring and the virtual spring we had was spill to kill. You know, we're a cross shoulder, wrong arm, send the ball east and west. Again, most of you are probably that way because, you know, the fast path to the end zone is uh, that, that straight line, that vector line going right through your tail. Can't have that, dudes. So the down schemes and kickouts and onside H backs kicking us out, that kind of deal. We didn't do a good enough job of spilling that. Uh, we have scenarios where we box it or straight up force it, but um, that was one thing I know that you'll see that when we came out of this, we didn't spill the ball enough and let our kids open up and run or run that cat down, put them in the 12th defender, which is the, the sideline. Okay, proper techniques, all that type of stuff. It's my standard mandate for my D-line guys. I just when I spent all those years on offense. I'm like, gosh, do we just run right down the middle of the chest that everybody were playing? My gosh, get on some edges there, D-line. We're only bringing four here, so let's give ourselves a chance. And that's a big pet peeve of mine. And how you do, Trey Henderson's our D-line coach. Awesome, played at USC, great dude. He's like the national record holder in Canada in the hammer. So he's a big old street cred looking good kind of good kid and whatever you do whatever pete carroll taught you man get it going on our d-line baby so we got a little better at that uh, and we've got a couple cats that can truly pass rush you know those are kind of hard guys to find especially our level and we got a couple special ones there one uh our man mike who's a true freshman from hawaii he's one of our one of our 808 guys uh whoo then he got hurt but doggone he's a good one uh Anyway, so how we defended the play, did we fit it up the way we planned to? The, the game plan itself, did our game plan and practice week thoughts help us be successful against certain opponents? I can tell you when we played Pacific, a conference opponent, they got into some 21 and 22 personnel and just pounded the crap out of us, and we couldn't hold our water. Uh, we did not plan that very well. We didn't have our secondary on run fits. You guys know we get in a team period, and our D-line just blows everything up against those, God bless them, scout kids and so we don't get great angles and great fits or rarely gets to the second level and almost never gets to the third level and team run or team team element, run pass deal, first down calls. So we got to do a better job of making sure the, the secondary, which by the way, here at PLU, we call the secondary the funky bunch. What's up, Funks? Yeah, I'm like, hey, I take the bullet on that, man. You know, we got to improve our perimeter run support and fits. Uh, and how that fit game plan, I know that was one in particular in Pacific. We just didn't work hard enough on power football against those guys. We held our water against the run or the pass. <laughs> but they got smart, you know, and we're giving up 50 pounds a guy in the D-line, and they just grounded and pounded us. And that was really, really fun to stand on the sideline and watch that take place. And then, you know, obviously from a game plan, what we could have done to help them out, and that that, that was one in particular or another. And we'll get to it, okay? Uh and then, you know, what did teams do that maybe we didn't expect that had success against us? And I'm not talking just plays that we got beat or our kid got beat on the ball or we bit the cheese and grabbed the mousetrap on this and some guy snuck up the seam on us. I'm just talking about did we do things or did they do some things that we weren't maybe as prepped for or that we need to be ready for, you know, expecting that, well, this worked last year against the Lutes. Let's keep this thing going i.e. a lot of perimeter screen with when we played Lewis and Clark. We knew Whitworth does that stuff a lot, but they got after us a little bit and went back to practice plans going, yeah, doggone it, we didn't work that bubble and quick screen enough. We always do, but... <clears throat> and then anything and everything that will help us improve our defensive efforts. So uh, this is kind of a lot of stuff, and it's pretty basic, guys, but this would filter all our thoughts. So, you know, we'd go through a play and we rock and rolled it. We fit it up. The out, the free safety's down the alley. We got secondary support from the boundary corner. Linebacker, short alley, scrape, turn and chase. You know, grab the, uh, the most efficient line you can as a D line. Awesome. Good fit. We just put a star on that, went to the next play. But, you know, we, we would find a play. What is our hawk doing here? Why is he in so tight? Plus, our safety's dropping a porch drop. He's dropping into the hook to curl. 
you should be curled flat. That's poor coaching. You know, that, that kind of thing is what we were going through. And this was the screen for that. So here's what we did. So we went through every game. And I told position coaches, if you got things that are more specific or more, you know, that six inch step, that hand placement, that vision control, keep track of that. Cause that's kind of your deal and your position group, but I'm kind of doing the D coordinator thing here and looking at big picture stuff. So we took every game. I went through every notes and obviously things I wrote more than once or twice per game or in general on the season that showed up on the sheet. So this was our Calu game, which was game one last year. That was the one game we actually had our original 11 starters and then the injury bug just started chipping uh, away from us uh, as the season went on. Uh, that factored in too. And we, we kept that in mind as we were watching our film, like, oh my gosh, we got, that guy came out of fall camp as our fourth, fourth depth, fourth guy in the three technique depth. And he's starting for us in the, you know, UPS game, whatever. So we came up with sort of general issues as the defense, uh, thick and thin ends. We were way too wide. We got our high motor five technique field side end for us, but holy smokes, what's he playing the flat? Golly. <laughs> of course, you'd think you'd get that from the box during the game. You know, he's not going to let anything get outside him. I'll tell you that. Now he was kind of ghosting a seven or nine technique on a true two man surface and uh, you know, pinning down, squeezing down that, that surf technique as Calu was not an RPO or zone read team. And uh, there it is, spill to kill. That's a D-line thing. Uh, up and press, looks to set up heats and simulated pressures. Uh, I know that's kind of America's defense right now is all these simulated pressures. So we do have an, what we call our up system. So we may bring the boundary side guys up looking like they're on blitz, blitz posture, but we're bringing the field side guys or bring up the field linebacker, which would be our mic backer, but we're bringing the buck, but more of that type of stuff to, you know, give some disguise, some prowls, we call it, to how the protection is going to fit up what that, where that running back is going to insert himself he's, if he's in protection. And I'll be honest with you, we see a lot of that because we, we do bring heat quite a bit. And then anything that went specific kind of went over on this side. So we're really talking to uh, Trey and his guys, Trey Anderson. Uh, we have a little blitz called plug. It's a read side. We expose the, it has to happen to a three man surface. So Calu played a lot of 11 personnel stuff. We exposed the three man surface tackle. He steps in, I go out. He steps out, I go in. He drop back passes. We work edges and take an inside deal. But uh, we weren't getting our three technique in the right place uh, to expose. So we get a spark across the guard to get him, to catch him. So it really exposes that play side uh, tackle. And it kind of defeated the purpose of what we were doing with plug. Um, and then what do we got here? The LBs and ends, aware of where we're bringing heat, adjust accordingly. Okay, so we may be bringing a Mike backer, but we got back set to the field. So buck backer in pre-snap alignment, you should be wiggling yourself over or boss it over backers to strength more to his side of the ball, you know, be subtle, be savvy about it, but don't just base line when we're bringing that mic, there's a big old void in there from where the Hawk is and that slot receiver just settled in that void when the mic blitz, you need to get there a little bit quicker, buck backer, that, that kind of stuff. So that's more specific. That's a coverage element for the linebackers. Okay, and we just went through game by game and did that. UPS, Lewis and Clark game. Uh, we got caught in, we're, we play a lot of quarters here and misreads and play actions and in, in and out routes. If we would have been more vanilla, three deep, you know, deep and divide, uh, drop an alley player, drop, drop a insert safety in there. Uh, they were pretty good at 50-50 run passing that down, and we were a little loose at times. So I just said we need to play more thir three deep on first down. Uh, trips Nub got after us a little bit, you know, an attached tight end, uh, three to the field, and how we handled that back edge. You know, we spilled a kill that thing. We forced in that thing. Uh, we would invert our strong safety as the alley player out there, put the corner on top of the tight end, and how those two fit with each other, how the buck backer scraped into that is – in essence, a D gap player, C gap align that defensive end there on a three man surface. Uh, you can see there, we ran, we ran a lot of quarters or zoning in a in a five man heat. And yeah, we're protected vertically, but it's it's second and seven, it's third and five.
So I'm like, man, we, we're, we're kind of between. We're just moving the chains here. We're kind of giving them. We've got naked alleys. There's nobody underneath the key two players. And so let's just commit ourselves to more man covers behind five-man heat than zone covers. So these are just things we were finding out based on what, what this opponent was doing. UPS game, there we go, okay? Um, general thrust, beat the block before you defeat the block. You know, we got caught on a... Uh, we got cut blocked out on the perimeter. It blew up everybody's angles. So prior to the cut block, we're all hair on fire going after it. Cut blocker got cut. He was down. Dude was out to shoot 70 yards, man. We were playing hard, playing fast, but our angles got all screwed up, and we got to keep that cut, cut block, control the, control the head, control the frame, all that stuff, strike away, see the veins in your hand, ride the bike, which is good the game. That's the stuff that we're coaching on. And I went back through. I'm like, yeah, we did those drills on Tuesday and Wednesday, because we know this team cut blocks a ton. Anyways, and they do this jump, they just clear cut. So the O-line just literally dives into the D-line, they, they quick rhythm pass, and, and whatever coverage that we had called, we see clear cut, which everybody with their 21 in their perspective view as a boundary or field corner and the safeties who were on top of this, the clear cut is extremely obvious. We're saying, put them in the ground and break. Don't, we're not working angles. We're not working divides. We're not working t key two paths. We are just coming downhill on QB's first look. Uh, we actually made that adjustment at halftime. But anyways, and then we, so guys, we went through all of our nine games, wrote up these little bit of notes you can see here. Uh, Okie okay, defense, we were in 11 alert, so we're in two five techniques. We weren't really too gap on our nose. We got gassed a little bit on some inside runs. So we call our, our slip front to the end away from the back. We'll go to a four eye. Now we're gap sound in there and our, in essence, five man front. And it spills out to our force players, C gap players, you know, if you want to put it that way. And just have an alert for that. We did, we did not have that in for UPS, who's in. 85% throwing team. And these guys throw it 60 times a game. So uh, the couple of runs that got through us, we just weren't gap sound, which does, goes against Cram, single gap, single block, play fast defense. So anyway, so this is sort of the big picture, all the notes and broad stroke elements each game. So then, then we took that, I, I guess I'll say I took that. Now position coaches, our LB guy, our head coach, he's making his more minutia notes. So is our D-line guy, Trey, and then there's the other five guys with me. So what I just showed you off the master template of what we're looking at, again, big picture, 30,000 feet in the air deal, the general comments per game, and then we took out, in essence, the coaching points or the install elements that will help us as a defense this spring. So this is what we come up with. So these are sort of mandated, will always be there, tackling, situational tackling. You know, we've, we've gone to that, you know, heads up tackling, you know, the, the roll tackle, the hawk tackle, yeah, head out of contact, all that, track stage, capture, accelerate, and finish. Uh, we got a whole progression on that. Uh, we did the whole playbook with that kind of stuff and that kind of talk. You know, all our coaches are talking the same thing. And we have tracking drills. We have staging drills, which is the shimmy jab, shimmy jab, rep, grab cloth. That's the capture part of it. Near foot, near shoulder on a base. And then as opposed to a profile, there's no staging of that, dude. You, you got the angle on. There's no windback, cutback here, rock and roll. Uh, then there's kind of the chase tackle. If heads behind, we go into a roll to tackle element. But anyways, that's the progression of it. Communication, verbal is a skill set. So uh, always, I mean, that's standard football guys and alerting strengths and sets and backfields and pre-snap uh, situational, uh, what we call SAE, SAE, situational awareness expectation. I think that's a, that's a military term, love that. But my point is we had a lot of young guys and they're a little bit, uh, come on, man, get in the dance here. Get your back up off the wall, get your groove on. And part of your skill set, you may not be a real verbal guy, Sean Kim, my starting free safety right now, but you need to be. It's it's a skill set. Bust up and drive and ball battle and fitting and capturing and all these techniques, but you're the quarterback. You know, I don't really use that term with that guy, but just get them all covered up. Do we have the structure? Do we have the integrity of what the call is here? 
but you must communicate that, especially as a more veteran guy and all these new guys who are not quite ready to voice up. Okay. Especially, you know, they may kind of got to coach it into them and get it out of them in practice. And then we get into a game and, you know, are wonderful 1200 fans. there just blowing all this noise all over the field. That's, that's a joke. Um, we got to talk, we got to communicate, you know, especially all these, you know, multi-set offenses and multi-formations. We got to get everybody at 11 is one. And I'm big on play the play. Okay. If you don't know, you don't go. If you don't know, you don't go. We got you probably aligned with some cushions, some space, some key and read time. Our first steps always is a secondary, what we call our chill steps. Stole that from Corey Unland, DC at Detroit Lions now. Chill, we used to call it creep, but just chill, man. I mean, your mind is alert. You're on the field playing football, but just chill because you don't know if it's run pass yet. There's play action. There's false keys coming out of the O-line. There's a false key based on backfield set, depth of the back, toes to the heels, heels to toe with the quarterback on a, you know, shotgun scenario or a pistol deal he's behind deal but they'll reverse pivot on that but play action comes on so, you know it's all this stuff going on but don't just motor up into a deep third uh when it's dude it's a run play you know so i'm really big on play to play play run when it's run pass when it's passed come on guys it's as simple as that um there's coaches there's so much more into that i get that and we get into that and levels and lanes and you know you have a key, but then you have a read when the ball snaps. So let's just make sure, because if you're not sure if it's run or pass, in about .01, you, you will know. Now, now we go. Now, now we go. So just don't overcook anything. Don't overthink anything. Again, clear minds, fast legs, but gosh darn it, play run when it's run and play pass when it's pass. And I, our kids are pretty good at that. There's so much more into that, guys. I get that. But when you can just kind of, you know, dilute this down a little bit and just let them rock, you know, we got a lot of things in there and we tagged a rope or lasso. That's a twist, by the way. We tagged a cloud to that 3D deal. We're going to roll a corner up now. We haven't done that yet in this game. So make sure we're not tipping that out, man. You know, that's the kind of stuff we do and that's how we'll get into them. And then this concept of two plus two equals four. Absolutely love that. Uh, that, that's a, that's an absolute, that's like in, in the universe, two plus two equals four. So when we're talking about fundamental concepts. We're talking about your ability to tackle your ability to communicate what we want to do against this formation or how you align or what it means to key two and cover four on a two over two, uh, quarters deal. This is what you need to do period. This isn't like do it my way or the highway deal. I guess I would say you need to do it because two plus two is four the way we think, guys. And if you get out of that perimeter, you get off that radar, uh, Doug, you really can't play here. Uh, we, we give you enough slack. We give you enough take ownership of your position. You may not be perfectly aligned because you got prowl on, free safety showing middle third. He's showing this spin, but he knows post snap. He's the insert. Uh, we, we give him all that. But when we are structuring down or we are rolling or spinning into what we want to do in that formation on that play. Two plus two's got to equal four free safety. You become the curl flat. Okay. Linfield's going to roll out pass to the wide field flat. They're going to do it. So for you to not expand, we call it pack expand to that play. Two plus two can't equal three. It can't equal five. You got to get the four. Now you might be six minus two equals four. You might be four minus one or check. There's my math. Let's call arts major. Five minus one equals four. But dudes, you got to get the four. And I, I maybe this sounds just silly, but I just I saw some of my guys when I kind of brought this concept. That was about a twenty minute talk and a you know fall camp late night you know, second week and they're just going, Oh yeah. Okay. I get you kind of time. I got it. Two plus two is four. Yeah. Yeah. And you're not doing it. You got to work on your math, big guy. <laughs> they, they love it. Okay. And then again, a standard fundamental guy, square equals strong. Okay. Square equals strong. Uh, so you're like, well, yeah. Squareness in the D line. Okay. We got thrust. We got vertical climb vertically, but you can't do it. We're going to stunt and move. And you get, you get off tilt, you get off axis. Now you're, you're thrust 
your engine, your motor, your eight cylinder is going towards the boundary. We need to go towards the launch point, big guy. So stay square on this. Ninebacker, square it up. DBs, we are not a shuffle crossover run bailout. We have those techniques or, you know, the, uh, the uh, Saban's done pretty good, right? But, you know, he's a bail crossover run, uh, the tail tilted towards the boundary, keep look everything inside. But I'm not sure how you get back outside. Your, your three-way go is towards the crown of the field. We want to be square. So that may be old school, but I love it when I see this high school taste. All oh, these DBs are backpedalers. All right. I love it. We don't weave. We angle backpedal when we're trying to hold levers or we're working to a, you know, a middle third off a, off a hash or off a inside a line of a slot, but we're, we're actually spinning and we're rolling the middle third. We'll angle backpedal to it. If it's a long middle hole, we will, what we call score technique, shuffle crossover run. But everything's about squareness. Squareness to the line of scrimmage, downhill. Okay, put your big, big boy muscles on and rock and roll those power clean squat muscles when we hit and engage and command control, stock blockers and all that kind of stuff. But we have got to be square. And Mike Byrne brought this to us. Uh, who's our quarterback coach now, helped me on defense last year, spent a bunch of years as sort of that quality control GA guy at Texas A&M. But he goes, Coach, Square is also smart. Gosh darn it. That's so good, Mike. I love it. Two plus two is four, baby. Square equals strong. Square equals smart. So that's a big one for us concept-wise. Okay, and then, guys, from, again, that master template to the filter of watching games and notes and comments, big picture-wise, we came up with the position group points of emphasis spring 2020, which became virtual Zoom call position group spring football for us this year, which in some ways was actually pretty cool. Okay, so D-line, there you see, base alignments, Tennessee to overline our, our width, okay? It's spill to kill. We have got to grasp two plus two was four. When we get a down-down kick out, either near back or backside lineman, you know, what is it, the uh, dart play, they're pulling the center. Yeah, okay, that's down scheme, squeeze and, squeeze and surf, you know, look inside, here it comes, and get your outside element, your outside pick to his inside pick, pop can that up, climb vertically, get two for one, all that stuff. I'm sure we all teach on wrong arming or cross shouldering, but we got to spill the kill. We got to spill the ball. We can't let that back cut up into that seam. Front side backers on scrape, backside guy may, may take the void and try to run through, but he's probably scraping over top. But if we've done the right thing on the front side at the point of attack, the thing's going east and west, bring it out to the hawk, free safety down the alley. That's all stuff we wanted to to fit up on that play. And then we found in some of our blitz things that we have got to coach paths. That we're a snake path, we're right down the line of scrimmage, and we'll snag, okay, that that uh, zone read player, the back, but we'll 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 stay home with the backside inside backer or we have maybe snaked you down or we, we call a fire on our defensive end because we're blitzing the hawk. We're blitzing the short, the short safety. So they become the smoke element or the contain. I don't use the word contain in our defense. We talk about b blocking walls and force, but whenever I use contain, man, guys just run for contain. We got to continue to compress and reduce real estate here and go get it. Compress it all down, keep it tight, scrape paint, all that kind of stuff. But you got a smoke player outside you. He's in charge of that. That quarterback bails, and he always, he always bails to his right. We know that, man. But you got to snake this thing down, DN. You got to fire that deal. Okay, so if we're bringing four from the side, four, we're in cover zero. We're bringing four from the boundary, the wide field end. Uh, I know we're trying to get you to align tighter as a five technique, but okay, which is the pre snap look. But you may climb vertically, if not first two steps, take go 45 degrees because everything is going to flush to you. Okay, or we got gut heat. We're bringing Mike and Buck up the gut, what we call Moby, and whatever the insert is, Moby cross, Moby in, Moby out, Moby smokes. The quarterback's getting gut heat, and he loves to flush to our left. Okay, so the end of that side, you're on a jet or a cage path because it's going to flush to you. He can't get outside you. Yeah, same thing, obviously, on our gut heat, our end. I, guys, this is standard football stuff, but this is stuff I don't think we coached real well. 
uh, I'm not sure we're going to tag in. Hey, Ann, you're on a jet path. Hey, hey, stud, which is our boundary side end, you're on a cage path. But they should be saying it to themselves. Or our Mike Backer may remind our end, hey, jet it, jet it. Okay, that's just stuff we didn't talk about. Or we got smokes and fires and unders. Who's on snake? Okay, then you layer in, oh, this is an option team. So who's got QB? Who's got pitch? Who's got dive dump QB pitch? That's you, free safety. So these are just little words to remind us, but we're going to coach paths better. Understand what is, there's a big difference between a smoke path, a snake path, and then really when we're talking about uh, jets and cages, we're talking about rush paths there, and, and uh, we're going to get better at that, which I'm fired up about. That, that, that alone will help us get a few more three and outs per game. Linebackers, alignments match the heat pressure, okay? We get pretty locked into base alignments and back alignments, but we got to make sure we get situational based on what we're doing. This guy's blitzing. We're running a stunt here. There's no way this thing can line can wind back here. So sneak yourself over to the strength side there, buck back, or that, that kind of stuff. Just be more savvy about pre-snap expectations. Or we have what we call a slip defense. So we'll four-eye that boundary side end so we can take the boundary side linebacker and put him out in the curl flat. He becomes our overhang. But let's not tip that out. Okay, or if we tip that out, so buck back and you're walking out in our slip front, so he's, he's head up to inside shade of that slot receiver, but we're running seven hole. So the short safety is going to drop in the buck backers alignment in base defense. So see what I mean, guys? So let's like, let's get a little bit more savvy. What we're going to look pre-snap, what we're going to look post-snap. So in linebackers sit a lot of that stuff up. We just look too based up in a little bit, you know, feeding concrete kind of deal. No, man, let's get prowling. Let's uh, like those safeties are doing back there. Linebackers get a little more savvy on this, you know, if you want to call it, you know, simulate certain things. You know where you need to go. Two plus two equals four post-snap, but we'll get there. And then no question, because of our dogs, we blitz those mics and bucks quite a bit off edges. And we get that down scheme. We wash the end down there and the down block by that onside tackle. Well, Mike Backer, you're now getting the kick out. You got to take inside pick on him. You got to crush over that dude and spill this thing out. And we got boxed up a few times. You know, we 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 dogged our fit short alley scrape linebacker. The next thing we have is a safety coming down, and that's a four or five yard run if we defended it right, as opposed to something we had a chance to stone within two yards of line of scrimmage. So you see what I mean, guys? We're getting into the big picture stuff, starting to work up the the template or work up the pyramid here on specific things per position group. This was DB stuff here. Okay, general third level runs again, nine, more nine on seven sp spill and fit work. <coughs> Excuse me. Cut block defeat. We gave up back to back 70 yard bubble screen plays because our field side corner got cut. Blew up everybody. I mean, it literally went back to back UPS and Chief Fox. Uh, our command control, okay, which is really, you know, can't pick a side. You got to get control. You got to defeat the block before you beat the block and i'm like god we drilled the snot out of that and i'm watching our whitworth game and their six one 198 pound receivers were beating up on my five eight buck 70 guys <laughs> i pull up that kid's bench press numbers like yeah he, he he can't even do two plates but anyways so we'll just get more mature a little bit bigger and stronger and held our water there a little bit better some of that is that quite frankly uh, and then the coaching element we call command and control. Button bets that kid, man. Get extens extension on him so you can escape. Again, square equals strong, more consistent of that. You know, that has to become just a stimulus response, an unconscious way in which we do things, but staying square in the in the back end. Uh, I really find in my first year kids DBs who are a lot of crossover run, tilt to the ball and bail out kind of deal. I got it, it's been a little bit of a process to rebuild that muscle memory, I, I, I guess I'd say, and get their chest in their quads, high turnover, you know, feet are on piano keys uh, so we can bust up and drive and get out and break and, you know, play the play, man. Run when it's run, pass when it's pass. And then the true force pass, we're really talking about Hawks. We got caught underneath a few times. Like, dude, we're actually in quarters out there. The wide, the wide X ran off the safety and you let the ball spill outside yet. Yeah, everybody's running, running for the hills there to try to catch up to this thing. That happened a couple of times against Will. Okay, and then so we took sort of the three elements, first level, second level, third level, 
and then put together, you know, in essence, the general points of emphasis this spring for PLU football, the spill to kill. So what I'm alerting is really our D-line coach and his drill sets and his everyday drills, either we need to coach it a little bit different, emphasize it a little bit different, or add more to the concepts of, because teams are, are down scheming us more than maybe we expected. I mean, everybody's running inside, outside zone guy. That's just gap fits, rock and roll. But when we played Claremont and we played Pacific, you know, in the true power running type scenarios, we didn't look very good. So we got to get that thing spilled and just make a mass of humanity, you know, around the crown of the ball so we can let our, you know, fast, smaller kids run these things down out in the alleys kind of deal. Okay, the up game, the simulated blitzes, feature more three deep on first down, get out of some quarter stuff because we get kind of some misreads and, and not as quick run support. To me, I'm like, man, man that's, what, that's what quarters is about. You're wired in, you're attached to formations and progressions. We should be fitting up. We're not diving into deep thirds, but it would give us two alley players both sides, two by twos, we should be overhangs both sides, three by ones, we should be overhangs both sides uh, and make that more first down stuff. Trip snub. We had, there were a couple games that they had never shown that formation, but they went to trips and how we handled the back edge. Yeah, we need to get better at that and practice that each week. If we expect to see that formation or not, is kind of where that comes from. The 11 alert and Oki defense. So we're in zero personnel against UPS, five wides almost all day, but they'll tell that slot to the boundary, that slot to the field, three receiver motion him back or, or shift him, stem him back to a, a running back spot. And if we're in two, two, five techniques and we got all this coverage, you know, three man go, eight man drop, we are, we got a gap short here. So we got an alert call to go on. It's like a Geronimo or Apache or something like that. Okay. Then how we're handling the formation and the boundary, you know, every, every now and then these teams bury that trips thing into a boundary. That's the one time we call it kill kill it's the same thing on a kick return we get a bad ball kick we all kill kill find the first threat we can wrong hat or wrong color and see what we get here kind of deal field the ball please okay but uh kill kill call puts us in a, a, a cover seven mode probably a slip slip deal we just got to do better at that and, and recognizing that because that can be a um can be a two by two the coverage is on they take the slot motion them into the boundary Okay, that should be check, check, kill, 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 and uh, get us into the best coverage versus the couple things they do when they do that. Most teams don't do that very much, but anyways, got, got, we got caught a couple times. Okay, so that's kind of how that played, guys, and then everything from that, from general stuff to position group stuff, then that would reflect the installs, the coaching plans, the position group revisions that we did for the spring and how that worked in. So this would be an example. This is some spring ball stuff for the funky bunks, the DBs, uh, the PowerPoints that Brant did with linebackers and Trey did with D-line were a little bit different. But these were like, guys, this is right from the PowerPoint that I use with our defensive backs. Okay, this was, you know, how you doing? You know, just kind of a spotlight drill for each guys. But um, deny the sky was our emphasis this deal. Uh, but the, here we go, points of emphasis, defense 220. So this is me doing what we're doing right now on a Zoom call with my 22 defensive back dudes. Eight of them are 808s. Hey, guys, put your shirts on, will you please? <laughs> dudes in Oregon. I got one guy in Minnesota. I'm like, that's the power of Zoom, man. I'm loving up. It's like we're sitting in Laris 101, which is our primetime meeting space. And I always plead with our head coach. I got the biggest position group, so give me the big room. And he almost always does. Every now and then he'll play the head coach card and take his seven linebackers in this hundred hundred seat lecture hall. Like you dog, I'll go to the I'll go to one hundred three, you know where the uh, science lab is and all that formaldehyde smell. It's really great. It's just really great. Yeah, Nick's Nick's smiling there. Okay, but you can see all the synthesis guys of what I gave you. This is what showed up to the kids. So I'm talking this stuff up, you know, throwing a few things in there, making it fun a little bit. But again, this is exactly what I presented to the kids, okay? Uh, that's a big one for me. Technique overrides talent. It's your will make plays. Uh, you know, I got kids who run 4-8, 4-9, but doggone it, they just make plays. And I got kids who are 4 fives that can run like the wind, and that guy won't bust a grip. I can't get him to hit anybody. You know, and then everything in between in Division Three. So uh, I'm big on that. 
you know, technique overrides talent, guys. You can handle it. You can handle press man. You just mirror him up, shut the door, feet open, hands. Now, we get 12, 15 yards down the field. Physics is going to take over, big guy. But what's supposed to happen by the time we get to that field area? Heat, pressure. Come on, D-line. You see what I mean? So that's what it's all in together. You know, we got great coverage. We got great heat and we get great heat and we get great coverage. That's all. It's 11 is one, but that's a big d- deal of mine. So th- these were the ones you saw again from the coach's template specific to defensive backs. And so th- I gave it to him. Here it is. Beat before de- defeat. Uh, these guys know what I'm talking about. G Fox UPS. Cause about six or eight guys on that zoom call. Those are the guys who play. I just I graduated one guy, one senior on, on de- defense. So all these guys are coming back, so they know what I'm talking about. Command, control, more violent, understand the crazy eight rule. That is if the ball, just like kick coverage, guys, if the ball is more than eight yards from the blocking element, grab an edge, dip and rip. If it's within that cushion, you have got to two-gap this thing. If you pick a side, you tell that guy where to go. So we got a rag uh reg away from ball side and insert commit ourselves capture it accelerate finish dominate to the deck all that stuff so I, you can see i added a little bit things that i use for the defensive backs from from the point of emphasis things we came up in the debrief score equals strong zone man flips leverage equals smart okay you know holding that post deal knowing yeah he's gonna run a post corner but you he can't throw the post that's my mom can throw that one that big long corner out throw into a spot that's a little tougher now okay M- must live at every snap so that would be my coaching point with the dbs just get more fundamentally consistent has to happen guys fundamentally consistent okay true force true force path i'm really talking about the hawks here uh, you know, skate that line of scrimmage, keep this thing tied, harden the vector or harden the leverage line and uh, compress that thing to the other nine guys running inside out of your deal. You know, make plays, fundamentally sound. Uh, uh, this was big for me about pushing that meter from being black and white, fundamentally sound to take the risks, man. There's that fine line between, you know, making plays and doing your job. Let, let, let's blend both of those. We had a great DB who was always a little bit worried. Uh, okay, Jared, I got it. Oh, that's a great pick. Geez, that's a great pick. You're actually deep third, but you actually jumped the bubble screen. I love it because he's reading intentions. So that balance between instinct and savviness, you know, this guy's just got kind of a feel for how this flow of this play or how these guys are doing things. Uh, and some guys don't. They're very black and white, and uh, they're awesomely coachable. But it's like, okay, I, I get that big fella. You you are, man, you are deep and divide. You got everything in front of you, but you got to stay within striking distance now. <laughs> you got to see if you can jump that seam ball in three deep as the field side corner. Uh, and then you know, take some risks. You know, take the calculator risk. Let's go after it. Leverage we talked about, stay up on the roof. That's a depth deal. Uh, match zone concept, we actually added that. Some of you guys probably run a lot of match man on demand or man out man deep what we added that this spring our guys are fired up so that's that cross between man free and three deep really based on the release of the slot receiver it all looks great versus two by twos we got we're gonna have to have a check versus three by ones i'm not smart enough to figure that one out or i'll be honest with you it's too much coaching we got other things we want to do so if they go three by one we'll, we'll zorro check that and zone that out but if they're two by two matches on Matches on our guys. I, I, from what I hear, I'm not out there coaching them now. <laughs> but in seven ons this summer, they're running match. I've done a lot of texting. Let's just say that. Okay, that's fair. That's fair. Okay, so anyway, guys, I, you know, I can go through all this. this. Is all spring? This is third meeting. You know, I kind of got all a little mental attitude thing for them. That's big for us. Thermometers, uh, thermostats. Now we're talking about those path elements. Okay, snake pass, smoke path, vectors, setting the point, hard to joint the defense. But again, guys, everything I'm talking about here, that came from the synthesis and the points of emphasis. We came up as a staff, as a defense, as position groups, and then it starts showing up here in the uh, position-specific meetings. And again, guys, I'm not like, whoa, isn't this world sh- shattering? Not, not, not at all. This is probably stuff that you do, but this is just how we, we've done it. And again, 
I, I, you know, I'm not being super detailed. I just think we can fill our kids up with so much information and, and some kids want that, no question. They, they, want, they want calculus, they just do. Nick and I were talking about that. No, we want to be in addition. Two plus two is four. Maybe a little geometry, yeah. We talk about vectors and paths, and then maybe a little pre-algebra, but not the algebra calculus stuff. That's just, that's off my deal. And I listen to these D1 guys, you know, you got a guy 24 seven coaching, you know, the two corners. And so he's got eight athletes in that room and he can spend his entire life on any and all scenarios that can happen to that boundary corner or that field corner awesome man and all the meeting time and mandated this and i'm like man i don't have that much time you know i got to get concept based and then kind of see who kind of fits take some ownership of the position makes plays technique overrides town all that type of stuff so uh yeah i can go through all this stuff guys but this was our you know when we started now we're truly installing now so you can see in our first three spring ball meetings <laughs> I was doing all this kind of concept stuff. And then we got into, you know, here's our 3D packets and different things that we do. We got a clear run, clear, quick rhythm path and before we go in the deep and divide and uh, work our zones. Okay. Hey man, that's that. That's kind of what I had today. Uh, and I do have this. Uh, I have a contact sheet here. I'm gonna pull it up, there we go. There it is. Okay, I just, uh, you see how quick I did? Man, it's all on the wrist. This little mouse thing is pretty cool. Uh, would, would love to talk to you guys. I mean, obviously, uh, I'm not making any selling point here is an outfit called First Down Playbook. It's out of Texas. It's a former 30 plus year high school guy that just put together some unbelievable, easy to use software to, to do play cards to make plays, the design playbooks. So I have, you know, with this COVID time, completely have redesigned our whole playbook. Everything looks the same now and, you know, just template certain formations and what coverage and overlay the coverage on it and colors and lines and squiggly lines and dotted lines. And anyways, uh, so I've got a lot of stuff. If anybody wants to talk scheme stuff, what we're doing, we're a 425 bring heat proactive get downhill wreak havoc cause chaos style of defense pre and post snap looks uh big on the dogs the dog system of what we do and uh, we're going to bring a fifth i just don't know who's coming where it's going and then how we tag in stunts and movements in it around it on the other side of it and then how we handle coverages is kind of what we do and then within all that guys we call our eagle that's our eagle defense our true four two five we have some hybrids. We call it field defense, where we get, in essence, if we got two stand-ups in the boundary, we're going to be in an okey look. Then we also have okey defense, a three-down deal. We add another safety in there, take that sure safety, drop him down as the boundary side hawk player is really what we're doing. So we got two overhangs now, and you obviously have more variety in what you can do with your coverage spins. And then we have what we call Texas. I think that's that Iowa State, that Texas defense. The two four eyes, the three down, the two four eyes, and the nose, with uh, the the linebacker stacked on top, and then the X player at about eight nine yards, right up, right stacked on that linebacker alley player. Hard to account for that guy. Never see him. How we rob him or banded him in the coverage stuff, because the rest of the secondary is playing what we all normally do in eagle coverages, eagle defense. So that's our Texas front, uh, and then we have a couple more. We called it Tango, but. Point being, would be happy to share any and all that type of stuff, guys. It all comes out of our Eagle defense in that system. Hey, so this has been fun for me. I know I've rattled on a little bit. I'm sitting here talking to myself on a little one-inch screen, and Nick's laughing back there. But by all means, most of this stuff I got, guys, took from things like this. Uh, Nick mentioned it. Uh, if you want to look it up, I think there I get, I get about 40 cents on commission. I did four tapes on uh, – Coach's Choice, I'm going to say Coach Con, that's the headset guys. Uh, Coach's Choice on tackling, on fundamentals of DB play, uh, dog system for any any and all systems out there, bringing that fifth when I say that, and then uh, some different ways to, to defend three by ones, which I'm sure we all see these days. Um, someone asked me the day defending wing T, I'm like, oh, 
I'm not sure. Just go opposite the center. That, that that's what I that's there's my coaching point for defending wing T. Anyways, uh, those are out there. You know, they're about eight nine years old. You can pick those up for about ten bucks now. And and then like once a year, I get a check for six dollars and seventy cents. And my wife and I go out and buy half a sandwich and have a big night big night out. Anyways, that's pretty cool. But happy to talk with you. Obviously, got a lot of time here. Even this fall, guys, we're we're gonna have some kind of spring ball format for the fall, and then we won't play until next spring. So we don't know how this lays out. But that's my email, Kim JJ. That's my Twitter. Feel free to follow me or direct message me. And then that's my that's actually my direct cell phone right there. Happy to talk to any and all of you about football stuff and i'll probably ask you more questions than you ask me but appreciate you taking a few times here holy smokes this guy talks a lot but uh, we got quite a legacy program at plu i don't think we play that up enough uh, but if you talk to any and all plu alum football kind of plays or players they will first thing out of the mouth will be the kind of person we've become because of our experience through plu football yeah we won a few games and championships there's not a lot of schools that can talk about that but uh, it's more so the experience and what you get from PLU football more than, or who you become through PLU football than what you get out of it. All right.